Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to our imaginative exotic island of Oahu, uh, Hawaii, here and to the show that is relentlessly looking into how we can create a built environment that's as comprehensively and substantially beautiful as our nature uh, undoubtedly is. And uh, this time I still have our tropical tourism expert, Suzanne, on the island, so I was asking her uh, of a show of her choice, and she said, please bring me back to about 20 years ago, and that is to a place that if you can get the first picture, that is that place um, where she was at the turn of the millennium. And uh, we want to go back even more in time and go to the next picture, and I want to use that occasion to introduce our guest today, which is Rick Prala. And I like to pronounce you Prala, the more the German way, you know. <laughs> Uh, that you have in your ancestry. And uh, yeah, thank you, Rick, for being here. And uh, I, I always wanted to bring you on a show, but you resisted for a while. I wanted to bring you on in your different capacities you are as an architect by training, who has worked as an architect in numerous capacities, but also someone who's working for the government right mm -hmm. now and tries to uh, make sure that we stay an inclusive island here. And, but today we bring you in, and we say this explicitly, not in any of these capacities, but we bring you in as Rick, who is a native of Hawaii, Kai. Thank you. And so welcome. And before you were native, uh, we're looking at something that DeSoto has uh, graciously uh, uh, given us here, because when he's not in the show, he has to charge for the picture, so we thank him for this and the next picture, which he has given to us for free. And um, if we go back, please, to, the, to this picture here, what are we looking at, Rick? Uh, well, this is Kuapa Pond before large-scale development. And you can see that strip of land by the ocean is the start of uh, Portlock Road. Mm -hmm. And there were fee simple houses along that. And then the road that comes across the bottom of the screen is what is now Lululo Home Road. Mm -hmm. And so other than the uh, Lululo Old Folks Home, which I think is the big house in that picture, uh, most of that was leasehold land uh, owned by Kamehameha Schools Bishop Estate. Mm -hmm. So this is what it was prior to the early 60s mm -hmm. and development mm -hmm. by Kaiser Development. And even before that, was it was basically one of the largest uh, native Hawaiian fish ponds, right, on, on the island. I, I believe so. I, again, I, you know, I only go back to Hawaii mm -hmm. to 1962, so when yeah. I arrived, the development was yeah. getting underway. Yeah. And next picture is the one who developed. So this is Henry J. Kaiser, and he's quite a remarkable guy. Uh, for those who don't know, he you know, built Liberty ships during World War II and did a phenomenal job with that. And he was also, earlier than that, part of a consortium of contractors who built Hoover Dam. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Kaiser also created the Kaiser Medical System, mm -hmm. and he did that for his workers on his various large construction projects. Mm -hmm. and, and we were running two shows. This is the right row of pictures mm -hmm. here. The, uh, the the top two ones with DeSoto was called um, Kaiser's um, Exotic Hawaii, which he built the Kaiser Dome, right. and these kind of funky cars that never really went into production. And there was another show that we called Kaiser's More Mainstream Hawaii which was his Kaiser cars for the people and also the Hawaiian village. Mm -hmm. But the, we saved his probably largest project uh, that he did for today's show, and that is your neighborhood. And the next picture is a picture that I wanted to get from DeSoto, and he said, well, that one I couldn't give you for free, so I stole it from TV because I saw, saw a, a, a documentary here, and as you can see, it's still courtesy of British Museum. And what are we looking at here? Well, Kaiser, when he started Hawaii Kai, one of his goals was to try and build with local materials. Mm -hmm. And so he came to Hawaii, he got involved with the Kaiser Hawaiian Village Hotel, and then he started developing Hawaii Kai. And actually, I think this is in the Triangle area of Portlock, because that was one of the first communities in Hawaii Kai that was open. And he did a lot of the early homes were simply made with concrete block, uh, some, uh, you know, interior, either stud walls or single wall 
and he really had sort of, you know, the houses looked like they belonged in Hawaii. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And today we have the very special uh, opportunity to go and look at one of these closer. <laughs> and the uh, next picture, explain us what we see. Well, this is, this is actually my house. I, my wife and I bought a Terrace Lanai townhome uh, we bought in 1985, but this building was actually built in 1964. And along Kauai High Street, which is actually the very first street in Hawaii Kai coming from town, mm -hmm. uh, Kaiser built a series of condo projects. I think a lot of realtors know them as the Hawaii Kai condo projects. Mm -hmm. And the two-story units that were split level were called Terrace Lanai's. And the one-story units that were generally duplexes, but I think the largest building has either four or six units strung together, mm -hmm. those were called garden lanai's. Mm -hmm. And so in this picture, the trellis work is alongside the garage. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we do have a garage sticking straight out in front, emptying straight into the street. So when you drive by, it's a series of either carports or garage doors that you look at but you walk along that and into the entry. And so the second picture is from the lower level, which is the living room, looking up the stairs to a mid-level landing, which is the front door. Mm -hmm. So let's go down into that living room and check that out. Next picture, please. So this is our living room and we are on the canals uh, in the Waikai Marina. Uh, these units are 22 feet wide with concrete block party walls. And the back of the house is, for our, in our case, is strictly a wall of glass with two sliding glass doors that open up. Uh, there are four by 12 uh, beams that span from party wall to party wall and four by eight cross members. And we actually have actual two inch thick tongue and groove decking that forms the mm -hmm. uh, second floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, it, the structure is expressed on the interior and if anybody's familiar with the work of uh, developer Eichler. Joe Eichler, mm -hmm. this is yes, very yeah. reminiscent of that. Very much, very much. It's just down to the, to the bones, right? And you yes. pointed out previously, but we want to be more explicit, that Kaiser could have easily, he was such a rich industrialist, he could have just basically retired somewhere at Kahala. But he was up for actually making something for the people and making what we call affordable housing today, right? right? Absolutely. I think his vision for Hawaii Kai was a place for all income groups of Hawaii to live. Mm -hmm. And so from the beginning, there was a mix of multifamily and single family. I do think that the triangle area, which is the area clustered around Cocoa Head Elementary School, mm -hmm. I think that that was the first formal Hawaii Kai neighborhood mm -hmm. that was developed. And along with that came Hawaii Kai Drive and Kauai High Street, mm -hmm. where I live. Mm -hmm. And those areas had much more modest units that were built. Uh, for instance, our townhouse, we don't have a master bathroom. Mm -hmm. it's, there's three mm -hmm. bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. And downstairs, out of the picture, is a, you know, a galley kitchen. And we have a downstairs den with a half bath and, mm -hmm. and powder room. Mm -hmm. And we raised two children there, and we all survived without killing each other. Mm -hmm. So it was plenty of space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I, I took these pictures when you uh, generously and graciously had us over the emerging generation for a field trip. Mm -hmm. And this is you out there and them hanging out. And the next picture is sort of the... Uh, introduces the next room, which is actually the, the outdoor, the garden, Ryan. Right, and what's nice about these units are is that we have sort of everything a single family dwelling has, except that I am attached, and mm -hmm. I am an end unit. So as you look at that picture on the right side is a unit that is the mirror image of ours. Mm -hmm. But we have a yard that then goes out to the canal. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we bought this unit was when we moved in, my children were four and five years old, and we had a beagle that we had had since we got married. And mm -hmm. so this was the perfect place to have a dog, mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a rabbit for years mm -hmm. that roamed around the mm -hmm. backyard. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. you know, we've just gradually worked on the landscaping. And what's great is the house just flows into the lanai, yeah. into the garden. Yeah. And so there's no curtains in the living yeah. room. So Perfect. you're just, when yeah. you're downstairs, you're part of this whole thing. Yeah, awesome. House as a garden, garden as a house. And the next picture, 
shows you at the edge of the property and right. looking into the canal because Kaiser was not just doing what they're doing out west and, and ever, which is pretty much like Phoenix, Arizona, or likewise, but he took advantage of the natural uh, opportunity of having been fish ponds and obviously was sort of more domesticizing that and mm -hmm. doing dredging and work but he wanted to make sure that everyone had a, had a waterfront property right right and most of the early development along the waterfront was in fact multifamily mm -hmm. or the houses you know as you look out that picture uh, we're actually looking at a weenie way which is a little U-shaped island of single-family homes mm -hmm. that were, you know, some of the original houses built in Hawaii mm -hmm. Kai. Mm -hmm. Now, this picture is rather artfully taken because in reality, uh, we look straight across the canal at see. other townhomes, Kali mm -hmm. Marina, and uh, yeah. we see a wall of glass windows. Yeah. And uh, one of our neighbors, you know, 20 years ago, got one of the first big screen TVs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and literally, you could sit on our yeah, yeah. and watch TV across the canal. Well, I, I admit the photographer being me is romantically <laughs> exotic. So I, uh, I admit that. And next picture is then us looking back from mm -hmm. the water. And, you know, you explained to me that you've done, you had some unfortunate things as a fire in the house and some other things. So you've been doing some uh, upkeeping, but basically always pretty much went back to the original or improved it, right? Right. I've tried to keep that original structure going, and I really like sort of that trellis work. Mm -hmm. uh, our neighbor's unit had a major fire, and we sustained relatively minor damage, mm -hmm. but... Uh, we had to rebuild the trellis over the back lanai, and originally it had been one by twos mm -hmm. with the the uh, plexiglass yeah. corrugated yeah. Uh, roofing material, and I just upsized it to two by two. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice, it's just a nice effect, yeah. uh, and it really gives some nice screening. And if you look at the lanai floor on the uh, left hand side. There's a vertical trellis that divides us from the end yard, mm -hmm. and again, it just—it's an—it's just a very pleasant mm -hmm. tropical mm -hmm. kind of feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know, it's just a bare painted concrete. Yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah. it's nothing fancy, no, yeah, but yeah. it works. And it's a fairly dry area as well. It's not super wet like in Manoa. It's probably not as dry as out in the Ever Plains, but still. And through the architecture, right. and we have to say this is this is majorly easy breezy, naturally ventilated. It is, and and uh, the other great thing about these units are that the party wall extends out four feet beyond the mm -hmm, back and mm -hmm, front wall. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it really helps capture breeze and funnel them into the houses. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, it, you get privacy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in the front and the back, uh, the bedroom level, you know, you're not right next mm -hmm. to your neighbor's mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. There is a four-foot mm -hmm. block yeah. wall that separates you, four-foot in-depth block wall that separates mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. it really helps with noise yeah. transmission. No, absolutely. Very, very tranquil, very sort of contemplating mm -hmm. atmosphere. but. You were also nice to take us on a little tour, so we want to do that here now. Go to the next picture, and you took us here and gave us an overview. This is pretty much where Suzanne was standing as well, way back. You see that right. high rise in the in the left corner, which is close to where you are, right? right. The high rise is Mount Terrace, and it has sort of an orange red roof. Mm -hmm. And so when our children were growing up, we always would point out the high rise and tell them, look, <laughs> You live by yeah. that high rise. If you ever anything ever happens and you don't mm -hmm. know how to get home, you can tell people mm -hmm. to go for the high rise. Absolutely. So what I do want to say here, though, is that uh, the first time I went to Hawaii Kai was about 1963 or so, and uh, we lived at Hickam at the time, and we were on our way to Bellows, and my mom's car was in the shop, so we were in my dad's old 52 Plymouth, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't go over the poly. Mm -hmm. So we went around the island, and it was the first time I came out to the east side. And what absolutely astounded me is that, you know, you take this, and this is pre-freeway, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you pretty much got there from Hickam by going on Nimitz Highway, mm -hmm. crossing over to Cam Highway. Mm -hmm. All of that's obliterated by the airport viaduct now, mm -hmm. and through town on King Street to Wailai Avenue mm -hmm. to Kalaniānaoli Highway and out to Waikai, 
And once you passed Coolio O, this big valley and pond system mm -hmm. opened up. Mm -hmm. And Kaiser's house was on the, the slope of Cocoa Head, right on the water. Mm -hmm. And my memory is, is that it was painted pink. And apparently his wife was mm -hmm. not quite as enamored with Hawaii as he was. And so he started painting everything pink. Mm -hmm. And at the time we did this, they were building the Hawaii Kai Drive Bridge. Mm -hmm. And so here were these barges, cranes, bulldozers, all of that equipment was painted pink. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just cracked you up as you drove by. <laughs> Here's all this construction going on mm -hmm. and all these guys working in pink mm. equipment. <laughs> and for years afterwards, there would be these abandoned construction mm -hmm. equipment all over Hawaii Kai <laughs> with this rusting pink paint. So oh, man. Uh, that, uh, that's, that's yeah, no, my that, first that's, engagement that's with memory. Hawaii Kai. So yeah. this is the lookout if you come down from yeah. Kama Bay. Mm -hmm. This exactly. is the lookout over Hawaii Kai. Yeah. And the big ridge going up is Mariner's Ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get some glimpses of yeah. the marina. Yeah. Uh, but it it's really quite a scenic area. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, it is. Very nice. So let's go on and next picture. And the next couple of pictures were just me basically pretty much out of the you know passenger side window of your car. If we can get the next picture like here. The next ones okay. where you just showed me some of these still, you know, kept original homes. So right? this this house is actually in sort of the triangle area backing up to Kalanianoli Highway. And again, this is the vintage of my townhouse. And these are, this is one of the original concrete block homes, open beam ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, very simple. And the one thing that I've always heard is that Kaiser, everybody made money in Hawaii Kai except for Henry J. Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I read was that when they started building the houses, particularly along Hawaii Kai Drive, somebody decided that they should sell for $28,000. Mm -hmm. And somebody figured, well, somebody had done the math. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they were taking a loss on every house that they oh, sold. Wow. But again, it's you know it's a little mm -hmm. about 1,200 square foot rectangle. Yeah. Uh, just a very nice tropical mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. and the concrete block does a good job mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of some heat shielding because mm -hmm. it delays transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, so just it's, it, that's one of the original Hawaii yeah. Kai homes. And so is the next one. I subtitled that the same along the same lines. I called it middle classy. They're all right. you so know, this very is, eclery, as you say. Right, and so this is up near the Cocoa Head District Park, and this is, I think, one of the single wall houses. Um, so Kaiser started development. I think the first closings occurred in about 1962, mm -hmm. and those were houses in the Triangle area. And then the areas alongside Lululo Home Road were developed. And so from the sort of mid-60s to late 60s, there were probably probably a couple thousand single wall homes constructed. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, there's sort of a mix of Asian influence mm -hmm. uh, very nice. and very honest structure. And again, single wall in a climate that harbors lots of bugs, single mm -hmm. wall construction mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Next picture, another one of these here. Kept original exposed beams, right? Very Eichler, right? Yeah, and I, I modern. think this may be in Hawaii, uh, Hahaone Valley somewhere. Mm. Uh, and again, it's just it's a nice effect. Yeah, yeah. And so next picture as well, concrete block. Uh, here's stacked bond. Right. Having the, we discussed quite a bit about if it makes sense to have the beams stick out because you had some rotting away, and right. I always put in a word for them and say, but it looks so nice. And they got to do some flashing. So there's. So my, There's little things here and there. But. My garage had this detail where the beam actually stuck out further yeah, than the roof. Yeah. Well, the problem is, of course, it creates a pocket mm -hmm. that collects water and it rots. And yeah, I, yeah. when I uh, did some work, I had to take off the beam ends because mm -hmm. they had been rotted. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually Coco Isle, which is uh, yeah. quite a nice uh, townhouse mm -hmm. development. And those units all have private courtyards. So that gate that you're looking mm -hmm. at that actually opens into a private yeah. courtyard off the front of the unit. Very nice. And do some next picture. So they don't call us totally romantic here, which which I am, <laughs> I admit. Uh, there are some things in Hawaii Kai that are probably not as Kaiser had imagined them, right? Well, some commercial I, I, infrastructure right. like here. 
Um, so uh, you have to remember that Hawaii Kai was sort of envisioned in the late 50s mm -hmm. and early 60s. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think everybody would agree that it was the best way to do it. One mm -hmm. of our problems is, is that we have multiple shopping areas. Mm -hmm. So there's no sort of Hawaii Kai town center, even mm -hmm. though I think that's one of the shopping centers yeah, yeah. is called that. <laughs> it is. But you sort of can't hit all three yeah. by walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get in your car and go. Mm -hmm. um, this area where cost is located and there's a big storage facility I think this was always slated to be commercial development mm -hmm. but it just didn't happen mm -hmm. and so I think that I think this was probably driven by Kamehameha schools mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. was probably yeah, the landowner yeah, yeah. Uh, but this all makes sense but at some point in time uh, that waterfront location may have a better use mm -hmm. as something mm -hmm. else but let's hope so man yeah. the next picture we see a Costco uh, truck here delivering, but we l see something next to it that almost looks like the box that the uh, cargo box. And, it is. And, and let's this, jump to the next picture already and then please explain what that is. Well, uh, this is a newer rental tower. Um, the property is the corner of Hawaii Kai Drive, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what that cross street is, Kalaho mm, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they tried to develop the site for years. There were multiple different development plans. And so they finally went ahead and built mm -hmm. uh, this like 10 story tower uh, and there'll be rental units, but at probably at the end of the 30 year affordability mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they may possibly get converted to condos or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I, I, my only problem with this building is that it's way out of context with mm -hmm. everything around mm -hmm. it. So you can see just to the right of the tall building, there are these three-story townhouse type yeah, yeah, buildings, yeah. and uh, the, these buildings just march right up to them. So that's sort of unfortunate, and yeah. and also it's a double-loaded corridor. Yeah. So there's you yeah. know you're pretty dependent yeah. on air conditioning yeah, yeah. Uh, to keep the temperature under. And with that, I'm missing what what your home features is as we call it exotic and tropical and easy breezy. But then the question is, can you bring, you, you, you can't sprawl anymore because the valley is pretty much taken over by single family, right? So the right. challenge is how do you basically can keep that sort of quality of living in, in a development that's higher? And we agree on that. That's not the way. And where is the lanai? There is no lanai. This right. is basically pretty much mainland curtain wall, uh, you know, and you live pretty inside, indoors. And we think this is just not along the lines of Kaiser's imaginative way and so the we want to close every show with an optimistic uh, lookout and 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 view so in the next picture something i want to contribute that basically traces back to something that you have told me when you were driving me through the neighborhood mm -hmm. actually before we the year before we did it with the students and we also drove by the few high rises there are there's the one next to you but there there is this sort of little cluster of other ones and you said this is actually the best way to put high rises is actually tuck them right at the foothills of the mountains where they can cause the least harm and they almost could blend in as being part of the mountain and you're not staring at them all the time right, right. no though this series of high rises are all different developers and they're along Waikai Drive and then Haheone Street and they are single loaded corridors, mm -hmm. so they all have natural ventilation, although one of, at least one of the buildings is centrally air conditioned. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are, you know, they, they're up against a hillside, they're not blocking anybody else's view, mm -hmm. and they pretty much have guaranteed views in that they're overlooking uh, single family zoned areas. Yeah, yeah. And you, when we're doing professional talk, and me as a professor, and you with your agency, I always bounce off one of my visions, which is Primitiva, and bug you with that one. And so I'm here pitching it again. It could, <laughs> it could be nestled in the foothills of Hawaii Kai. As again, we have the housing crisis. You deal with that every day in your, in your business, and I'm trying to address that in school. So. Mm -hmm. Just all we're trying to say is this project or something else, but try to understand sort of the imagination that Kaiser had that, as you said, was doing local materials, was doing affordable, was doing exotic, was doing easy breezy. That, I think, is the genetic code of Hawaii Kai that you should sort of continue 
as you know challenging as it is as we see because some right. investors and you know whoever is engaged have different sort of ambitions well he started that way and i still remember in about 68 the grant companies came in and built mariners mm -hmm. cove mm -hmm. and we all went bananas cuz you know fancy models mm -hmm. one of the models had a pool with a table anchored in it and stools oh. so that you could sit in the water and eat lunch. Uh, and it was yeah. it was quite a different thing from yeah. sort of what yeah. we had started with. But, yeah. Ki you know, Kaiser Development only did a certain number of projects. Yeah, of course. And they ended yeah. up then yeah. selling off parcels yeah. for yeah, other yeah. developers to build. And the next picture is sort of along the same lines of the genetic code. This is one of these sort of island communities down right. there. Right, well, this right? is the peninsula which ultimately Stanford Carr developed. Mm -hmm. and and did a great mix of their group of single family houses. There were the carriageways, which are two story, long, thin, zero lot line. Those are along the interior. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the exterior were cottages and townhouses. Mm -hmm. Again, a mix of styles, yeah, yeah. a mix of sizes, mm -hmm. just again, a community that has a broad spectrum yeah, of yeah. types of units. And also they have the four story. Uh, product built mm -hmm. on a concrete mm -hmm. parking mm -hmm. podium. Mm -hmm. And again, we're, as the little suggestion is the top row, we did a previous show with, uh, with Peter Shi, who has done this building in Hawaii at the very top left, and he built it with uh, tilled up concrete panels. He also developed this, which he called a double I CMU, which is pretty much epoxied. So this is an island, you know, uh, innovation that sort of Again, could be, and David Rockwood and I were very impressed by your townhouse, and we developed something that we call Volcrete Valley, and there's a very old show about that, when mm -hmm. we do zero lot line construction, we use autoclaved area concrete. So we're thinking these could be all things that go beyond what the conventional developer does, a Stanford car and the other ones, which is pretty much conventional construction, mostly stick frame, and, you know, it is in the water, so, you know, you got the termites and all the things, so why not sort of reconnecting again to the genetic code? and Along the same lines, the next picture is something I was tempted to show before, but then I put it in here because that's also one we drove by. And you said, right. Martin, that would be interesting for you. Look at that. Right. This is There's a small street with, uh, you know, maybe there's 20 or 30 houses. So somebody did this little subdivision behind the Hawaii Kai uh, Library. And the buildings have these concrete block walls, and the rest appears to be single wall mm -hmm. construction. And there's a bit of an Asian flair. Yeah. And again, it's the kind of house that you look at and you sort of instantly think, you know, it's kind of tropical. Yeah, well, it no. looks like Hawaii. Absolutely. And so the phasing out picture is the next one, because as if I would have known, when we were developing with DHHL and the BIA in our school way back, the new Hawaiian home for DHHL. We were going along the same lines. You know, you see the similarities, almost striking, as if I would have been stealing, you know, but I always tell my emerging generation there is no stealing in architecture, it's mm -hmm. just long term borrowing. Right. So it's the same kind of notion. And we developed that with Great Pacific Rocky Mountain Precast as prefabricated and and so all these things. So we're saying to the next generations of developers, of architects, uh, look at the genetic code, go back to the original, and then that might inspire you, you know, what you want to do, so. Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully somebody can figure out how, you know, it's easy to have this very uh, ecological residence when you're sitting on an acre of land mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. can open your doors mm -hmm. for breezes, et cetera, mm -hmm. and hopefully there's sort of a midpoint where we can achieve density, yeah. but at the same time we can take advantage of this wonderful climate. Absolutely. Perfect closing note. Thank you, Rick, so much Thank for you. having been with yep. us and for the insight into your native hood. <laughs> and we're probably going to do a couple of follow-up shows. We actually have a Docomomo um, uh, um, talk story planned about Hawaii Kai, and I'm probably inspired by you. I'm probably going to do one with one with the Soto that we call Henry's Hawaii Home, which will be his own home, which is of a different standard, and but it's also worth looking <laughs> yeah, at. Yeah, quite different from where it's I live. It's quite, exactly. <laughs> so uh, 
with that, uh, keep tuned in. Next week, DeSoto and I again, we're going to talk about celebratory circulations, which is about how you get up in a building here. And there's some interesting history and how do we deal with this in the future. And so uh, I hope you'll be with us for that again. And until that, please stay as imaginary tropical as Rick uh, and Henry. Bye-bye. <laughs>